ProtonMail has risen to be the most popular privacy-focused email provider, acting as a number one alternative to the advertiser-centered business model of Gmail, Yahoo, and other mainstream email providers. Being at the forefront of encrypted email providers, ProtonMail has also recently faced some harsh criticism over its allegedly false security claims, misleading advertising, and supposed lack of technical guarantees to protect user data. A security researcher Nadim Kabesi and the YouTuber by the name of Life Overflow have presented an argument, which they self-proclaim to be nothing less than an factual truth, that ProtonMail should drop its webmail service due to technical limits of JavaScript-based implementation of PGP encryption in webmail. Since ProtonMail leads the competition to the Gmail-like privacy-invasive model, coming up with claims that lead people to believe ProtonMail is not what they signed up for raises some serious red flags. ProtonMail responded to this paper on Reddit, which eventually led to a heated debate between a ProtonMail representative and Nadim himself. Nadim's core argument is that ProtonMail's cryptographic architecture ultimately does not guarantee end-to-end -end encryption for the majority of users, a majority of users being those who sign into ProtonMail through their website rather than a native app on Android or iOS. Nadim assumes this despite the fact that ProtonMail doesn't release statistics on how their users sign into their accounts. So why should ProtonMail fail to provide the same level of security for their webmail app as for their smartphone apps? The reason is technical, but simple to understand. It's about trust. I lied. ProtonMail provides a user-friendly interface to exchange encryption keys using PGP protocol, the highest standard available for securing communications today. The problem with PGP was that its implementation used to be too technical and time-consuming for the end user. After the NSA leaks, however, more developers began creating software that would make secure PGP encryption available to the masses. That's where services like Signal and ProtonMail came to light. Like ProtonMail, Signal also provides user-friendly interface for secure end-to-end -end encryption using PGP. But unlike ProtonMail, Signal doesn't provide a web-based interface. You can use Signal's mobile or desktop apps, but there is no service accessible through a web browser. ProtonMail offering an email service started out with a webmail and only later developed mobile apps and just recently started offering a desktop bridge that works with traditional mail clients. The problem with ProtonMail's webmail service is that each time you go to sign into their website, you have to completely trust ProtonMail that the JavaScript that your browser runs is correctly implementing PGP and is not trying to steal your private keys and read your messages. This problem is limited with smartphone apps because each new version of an app has to be signed by the author and the platform, which in this case is ProtonMail as the author and Google Play Store or Apple App Store as platforms. With mobile apps, users can verify whether they receive the same binary for a particular version as everyone else. Because of the differences in the levels of trust, Webmail services are objectively less secure than desktop and smartphone apps. That is if you expect ProtonMail to try to execute a malicious JavaScript that will let them read your emails without being detected. The fact that Webmail is less secure than native apps is not new and ProtonMail has been saying that from day one. In their thread model article, ProtonMail explains this issue and even openly says that ProtonMail is for average people who want to protect themselves against mass surveillance, but is not for a next Edward Snowden. ProtonMail successfully accomplishes this mission because their servers can't be tapped by the NSA to read plain text emails as is the case with Gmail, Yahoo, Apple or Microsoft. Where ProtonMail and Nadim differ is that Nadim thinks that end-to-end -end encryption is not possible in webmail and ProtonMail should not be calling their webmail end-to-end encrypted. If you're questioning Nadim's choice to single out ProtonMail in his analysis, your skepticism is on point. 
Despite the fact that all of this criticism directed at ProtonMail goes for any web app that offers end-to-end -end encryption, including popular services like WhatsApp or Wire, and every webmail service with end-to-end -end encryption, like Tutanoda and Mailbox, none of that is mentioned in his paper. It's not a good practice to make such a general argument that end-to-end -end encryption is not possible in webmail, direct your criticism on a single provider, and then present your opinion as a well-established fact among industry leaders. Nadim and Live Overflow seem to have a problem that ProtonMail mentions end-to-end -end encryption on their website. Encryption is the first feature they list in their security details along zero access to user data, which means we don't have the technical ability to decrypt your messages and as a result we are unable to hand your data over to third parties. With ProtonMail privacy isn't just a promise, it is mathematically ensured. But other email providers with similar webmail implementations of PGP, like Tutanoda and Mailbox, also heavily market end-to-end -end encryption. Mailbox even has an article where they explain that it's probably better for non-tech-savvy users to trust the Mailbox servers rather than their own smartphones. The point is that email providers like ProtonMail should be free to advertise end-to-end -end encrypted email while offering a webmail service at the same time. Inviting new users to sign up for an encrypted web app is more likely to lead them to use more secure native apps. And that's okay as long as they are transparent about it, which Mailbox, Twinanoda and ProtonMail are. Unfortunately, Nadim is refusing to accept his arguments as opinions on design rather than facts. He even doubles down on this on Reddit and the Life Overflow backs him up. ProtonMail's argument against the paper is saying that this is just an opinion, saying that Nadim draws the line here arbitrarily. Nadim's opinion is that, as he writes, no webmail-style application could. But that is a bit unfair. This quote is not the root of Nadim's argument. It is quite an extreme position to take, but he takes this position as a result of his argument. This is Nadim's conclusion. Conclusions can be opinions too. It's better if your opinion is based on a rigorous research and scientific methods, but it's still an opinion. Considering the fact that Nadim's paper directly links to his business website, where he offers security audits, and that his analysis doesn't state anything new that hasn't been discussed years ago, this paper puts into question his credibility and bias, rather than ProtonMail's cryptographic design. Normally, this kind of criticism wouldn't be a major problem. But it's dangerous, because it makes some people make false equivalencies between Gmail and ProtonMail when there are fundamental security differences between the two. Google employees and even third-party developers have been reading your Gmail messages. Nobody is reading your ProtonMail emails. Google is an NSA partner. ProtonMail is based in Switzerland, outside of the US or EU jurisdictions, and partners with a no surveillance agency. Emails sent to and from Gmail are still sent as postcards. Emails sent to and from ProtonMail are sent as sealed envelopes. Gmail is tracking your online activities outside of Google. ProtonMail doesn't track you. It's very welcome to have different opinions on security designs. Nadim is free to think that webmail encryption can never be secure enough, and ProtonMail is free to implement end-to-end -end encryption in webmail as best as they can. The choice of who you trust with what data is up to you. I actually agree with both Signals and ProtonMail's approaches. I'd rather use ProtonMail for my email account than Gmail at any time. But I choose to use Signal as much as I can when I want to talk to my closest friends and family because I recognize the limits of webmail security. ProtonMail and other encrypted email providers are doing an essential service to the world. They are dismantling the advertising business model of the tech giants by offering email that is not being read by government agencies, advertisers or company employees. They are helping to make end-to-end -end encryption mainstream and popular with the masses. Some people still need a web-based email service, and if they want better privacy, it's a lot more useful to recommend ProtonMail or Tutanota than to say no webmail is secure enough. 
The fact is that if you sign up for ProtonMail or Tutanoda, you are not being lied to when they say that your end-to-end -end encrypted emails can't be read by your provider. Technically, ProtonMail or Tutanoda could try to trick you into executing a malicious JavaScript in their web app, but it's you, the end user, who would have to run it. If you create an account and then never use their web apps, but only native apps on your phone or desktop, then the attack surface from your encrypted email provider is largely diminished. So what can you take away from this? If you need to use email but aren't confident with manually exchanging PGP keys, then use open source privacy focused email services that will handle end-to-end -end encryption for you. Use native apps instead of web apps whenever you can. But if you need a PGP implementation where you don't have to trust your provider as much, then using Signal is always going to be superior. Whether ProtonMails, Tudanodas or any other encrypted email services, security design is not good enough for you depends on your threat model and opinion. But for making mass surveillance uneconomical and privacy-invasive advertising unfeasible, they are good enough.